are you really going to go there? Are you really going to do this? Is this really happening? Oh my god. I just want to let the record show that, you know, I'm just struggling. struggling. Like, 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 struggles, like, struggles. struggles. Are real. are real just me having an existential crisis and reevaluating the entirety of my life hello my friends welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome my name's bella and i love to constantly challenge myself to do things for no particular reason and for this video i thought it would be really interesting to challenge myself to read translated fiction ever since i read sweet bean paste i feel like my interest and my desire to read more translated fiction has skyrocketed i want to feel what i felt when i read sweet bean paste heartbreak heartache pain so much pain sadness tears streaming down my face there's a certain magic to Japanese literature that I haven't really found in any other type of literature and that made me curious to find out if there are any other translated works that have their own kind of magic whether it be French literature, German literature, Chinese literature, and yes of course Japanese literature I just cannot wait to do this challenge I wish I could read these books in their original language but unfortunately I can't read let alone speak Japanese, French, or German, but that may soon change thanks to Rosetta Stone. Back in 2021, I started my German learning journey, but because of life just getting in the way and other hobbies and not having enough time, I just slowly lost motivation. That's why I picked up Rosetta Stone because of its immersive and intuitive approach to learning. Their lessons are expert built, pairing pictures with audio from native speakers to provide a unique, engaging learning experience. One of my favorite things is the voice recognition tool. This way, I can practice my accent and get the pronunciation down to a T. Er ist reis. Er ist reis. Sie trinkt Wasser. Sie trinkt Wasser. Another thing that I love is that the lessons are as short as 10 minutes, meaning that my busy schedule and my short attention span won't get in the way of my learning. For those of you who love to keep on learning and expanding your horizons, even when classes are over, I would highly recommend the Rosetta Stone lifetime subscription. This gives you lifetime access to 25 languages, including Spanish, French, Dutch, and German. From now until June 18th, you can choose between their three month, 12 month, or the lifetime subscription for 50% off. Whether you want to learn now or in the future, Rosetta Stone has got your back. So let me know what language you're going to be learning in the comments below. And now let's talk about the books that I'm planning to read for this reading challenge. My TBR for this reading challenge consists of books that have been written originally in Japanese, German, French, and I think Chinese as well. So we definitely have an interesting collection of books. And the first book that I want to try and read for this challenge is called Perfume, The Story of a Murderer, written by Patrick Suskind. I recently got this book thanks to one of you guys. Sam, if you're watching, you're a true dude. Thank you so much. And it just looks really interesting. I remember that I didn't even know this was a book because I first saw the movie like maybe 10 years ago and I was so appalled by what I was watching. It's literally this man who just goes around town killing women because he wants to make a perfume out of them. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's basically all I know of this story, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be more behind this character and behind his atrocious actions. I mean, at least I'm hoping, you know, you can't really justify his actions, but I'm hoping like there's just a little bit more behind his need to make perfume out of pretty women. This is the first one that I want to read and it was originally written in German. The second book that I want to read for this challenge is called If Cats Disappeared from the World, written by Genki Kawamura. And this was written originally in Japanese. I don't really have any expectations for either of these books except for the Japanese one because I feel like it's just going to be very emotional and very focused on human emotions. So hopefully I'm not wrong. I've really just been craving those types of books that makes you rethink your life choices and makes you question 
everything you've been through. <laughs> I'm kind of in the mood for, you know, having a little bit of an existential crisis, if you may, you know, those are always fun. I also have The Stranger written by Albert Camus. This was originally written in French and I recently got it on my trip to New York City and I've been hearing so many mixed reviews from people in my comment section being like, oh, you're going to love this. This is just the kind of book that you've been recently loving. But then other people are like, oh my God, you're going to hate this this is so boring literally nothing happens you're going to have such a hard time and i'm just so fascinated by these two groups of people who think i'm going to either really love this book or really hate it and i can't wait to see who's correct i don't really know much about the stranger except for what i read in the back of the book which says that this man has been involved in a murder and that's sort of where the story revolves around so color me excited who doesn't love a good murder <laughs> as long as it doesn't involve myself which yeah sure the next book that i want to try and read was originally written in chinese and it's very different from all the books that i'm going to be reading because this one is more fantasy romance type of deal and if you've been here for a while then you know that this has been an obsession of mine recently and that is heaven officials blessing yes um <laughs> i'm just really excited to continue this story i will be reading volume three and i just need to know where our characters are going to end up i need to see xie lian's and san lang's relationship blossom i need to see them take the next step in their relationship, you know, <laughs> like I'm just excited. And maybe, you know, it'll be a good balance to all of the emotional and philosophical books that I'm going to be reading this week. So, you know, it's like a little mix of different genres here and there. We have literary fiction, we have philosophy, we have contemporary, and now we have fantasy romance. So I think it's going to be a good time. I am so excited for all of the books that I'm going to be trying out this week. Again, I'm going in with very low expectations Expectations. I just kind of want to see what these translated works have in store for the truck agrees <laughs> I just want to see what these translated works have in store for me if I'm going to learn anything if I can take anything away from them and I'm excited to share this experience with you guys because translated fiction is something that I've slowly started to fall in love with so I'm happy that I can share this with you and hopefully you enjoy so without further ado let's get this challenge started So let me explain, I <laughs> I finished the first book of this challenge and I didn't vlog it. Yes, you're welcome. I am the best booktuber on this platform, thank you so much, tell your friends, tell your family. I don't vlog the books that I read, yes, thank you. <laughs> no, but in all honesty, I just didn't vlog. I did read it though, <laughs> and that book is Perfume, written by Patrick Suskind. This was originally written in German, and it was translated from the German by John E. Woods. So everybody please give a round of applause to Mr. John. Look at the amount of tabs. I love showing you guys how my book looks at the end with all of the tabs that I've included because I really like how they look, and I love sharing it with you guys. So I may have gone, actually no. I was going to say that I went a little crazy with the tabs, but I'm not going to say that because I didn't. This book just had such incredible writing and it has some really amazing prose. There was so many things to underline and there were so many things that I wanted to dissect and that I wanted to analyze and understand. I literally flipped the page and I couldn't stop thinking of what I had just read. So there were so many moments where I would just reread the same passage over and over again, not because I didn't understand, but because I was so fascinated by the author and like the characters themselves and the way that their minds worked like these characters especially our main character Grenouille he um he <laughs> he truly redefines psychopathy and he does it in such a way that is a little bit worrisome but also so fascinating my favorite word apparently I feel like I've used fascinating in every single video of mine for like the past two months but hey apparently i've been fascinated by everything i've been reading recently so 
sure why not this book was fascinating i was fascinated <laughs> yes the fascination is amazing <laughs> For those of you who have never heard of this book before, if you've maybe not even seen the movie, because that's how I first heard of this book, we are following our main character, Grenouille, and he has not had a good life. Understatement of the century, but hey, we have to say it. For some reason, everybody that comes into contact with him is immediately just like um, disgusted by him or just like very wary or they feel like something is wrong with him he doesn't have a smell which is a very important element because Grenouille's most what's that word Grenouille's most um <laughs> like his number one talent his most desarrollado how do you say desarrollado in english his most oh my goodness <clears throat> sorry i need to use google translate desarrollado developed yes thank you his most developed sense is his scent his nose amazing wonderful he can pick up scents from every single corner of the room even like miles away he can smell people that are going to visit him he comes to see the world as just different sets of scents and smells and that is how he comes to understand the world that is how he comes to relate to it and I think because of that, he has a hard time socializing or like interacting, connecting with people. He doesn't have anything in common with them. He is honestly disgusted by them because he says humans smell horrible. <laughs> they are just a conglomeration of the worst smells that you can think of. They are just rancid. Pudridos, how do you say that in English? They are rotting from the inside and he can smell that on them. And and because of that, he just would much rather spend the rest of his life alone. He doesn't like humanity and he doesn't like humanity because humanity doesn't like him. So it's this very twisted relationship that he has with humans and with people. All he knows is hatred and all he knows is what people have shown him. So of course he has a very negative outlook on life. He has grown very isolated, very detached from humanity and emotions. Those are things that he just cannot comprehend. Smells, he can totally understand. He can hear them, he can smell them, he can feel them. But when it comes to concepts that don't have any physical form or don't have like any type of smell, he can't really wrap his head around them. Like if you try to talk to him about God, he doesn't understand it because he can't smell it. So he truly sees the world through his nose. So in Perfume, we're following Renoui as he's just living his life, trying to do the best he can. I don't know if that's correct, actually. We're following Renoui, yes. And he does take certain jobs that help facilitate his, I wouldn't say hobby, but more like, you know, life purpose. And through these different jobs and through the different people that he has, like he is forced to socialize with, he starts to understand that there are certain smells that bring out different emotions in him. Like there are certain smells that when he smells them, he is filled to the brim with this sense of happiness and completeness. Like through his whole life, he's felt like there's something missing. But then one day he smells something and this something is a girl <laughs> and he's like oh damn that that smells kind of fire and i need to have that smell with me forever as any logical human being would think he decides to kill this girl so that he can preserve her scent forever and <laughs> yeah it's you know what i mean like Indeed, human odor was of no importance to him whatever. He could imitate human odor quite well with surrogates. What he coveted was the odor of certain human beings, that is, those rare humans who inspire love. These were his victims. There is not much logic behind his acts of murder but in his mind they make sense because you know he's just trying to find the perfect smell he's trying to fill in this void or like this hole in his life or in his soul and i and he thinks that the best way to do that is to try and find the perfect smell and the more that his life progresses the bigger that his delusions 
grow. I don't know why I'm such a sucker for these types of stories, but Grenouille's descent into madness was so fun to read because it was so Delulu, literally one of the most delusional stories I've ever had the pleasure of reading. <laughs> It was wonderful. It was so entertaining and so like out of pocket at times. I was like, good sir, would you please calm down and take a second to think of what you are doing and what you are thinking of doing. I know technically we can't talk about the ending because I would never want to spoil probably the most bizarre ending that I've ever read in my life, but perfume literally takes the cake for the most bizarre ending, the weirdest of endings. I literally could not believe that this book ended the way that it did. And when the ending started, I was like, are you really going to go there? Are you really going to do this? Is this really happening? Oh my God. This story just takes so many turns and so many twists that I did not see coming. The more you delve into the psyche of Grenouille and the reasonings behind the things that he does, it's just wonderful. It was, an incredible reading experience. He had found the compass for his future life, and like all gifted abominations for whom some external event makes straight the way down into the chaotic vortex of their souls, Grenouille never again departed from what he believed was the direction fate had pointed him. It was clear to him now why he had clung to life so tenaciously, so savagely. He must become a creator of sense and not just an average one, but rather the greatest perfumer of all time. It is very interesting to me how such a dark and violent story of this murderous man who is just committing these atrocious crimes is written in such a beautiful way with such beautiful writing. It's like those two different aesthetics, like beautiful writing mixed in with like what the story is actually about. When they're put together, it's, such a clash in my brain, but it works so perfectly. I don't know. It's just very interesting to me. So I am very happy that I read Perfume, A Story of a Murderer by Patrick Suskind. It was a very interesting experience. And I would actually recommend this to you guys. If you're looking for a good German classic to dive into, if you like stories about murder and looking into the psyche or like diving deep into the psyche of a psychopath, I would highly recommend Perfume. So now that I finished Perfume, I think I'm going to be picking up If Cats Disappeared from the World, written by Genki Kawamura. This was originally written in Japanese, translated from the Japanese by Eric Selland. So everybody say, thank you, Eric. Thank you, Mr. Selland. And I don't know quite a lot about this book. I mean, from the title, I'm guessing that maybe cats are going to disappear from the world and this is like a parallel universe where cats are no longer with us and the consequences of that, maybe, I'm sure. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm going into this book with zero knowledge, but hopefully it's going to be fun. And this time around, I'm going to try my best to actually vlog it, so yeah.
have just finished having a little jam session with BTS because <laughs> I really needed it, you know what I mean? Like I just needed to dance my emotions away and sing my emotions away because I just finished reading If Cats Disappeared from the World by Genki Kawamura and it is a very simple book in the sense that it takes such a convoluted theme as humans and emotions and what really matters and it breaks it down into the simplest of things it reminds us of what is truly important which is human connection not necessarily what you have what you own how much you make in a year or the things that you've done how many friends you have what truly matters at the end of the day is if you've managed to make a connection and if you have a fulfilling life outside of your material possessions oh my goodness okay this story has a very simple but bizarre concept because we're following this man and he just found out that he's dying and that same day he he receives a very interesting visitor um, the devil himself shows up on his doorstep and he says if you want to keep on living you just have to choose one thing to make disappear from the world and you get one extra day to live so like for example if he chooses for cell phones to disappear from the world he gets one extra day of life there's like different things that he chooses to make disappear from the world entirely and it's this discussion and also analysis and also deep dive into does it really matter? Like, are these material things worth my life? Is my life worth these things? And how do these things affect our lives? What are the consequences of these things disappearing from the world? How have we changed? How have we grown dependent on these things? Like chocolate and cell phones and movies and music and cats. Yes, um, the devil wants to make cats disappear from the world. It's a very, again, bizarre concept, but I think that the way that the author went about exploring this theme and this subject made it so clear to see that at the end of the day, the most important things in life- All right, so my camera battery died. You know, even legends have moments like these, so excuse that. As a consequence, I did lose my train of thought Aww. in regards to if cats disappeared from the world. I don't really remember what I was talking about when the camera died. I had a really fun time reading this book. I actually, okay, wait, I wouldn't say fun, but I'd say it was a very insightful read. It did get me thinking on a lot of things, and again, I really appreciate the simplistic perspective that the author takes on this i wasn't expecting to finish this as fast as i did but once i started i just didn't really want to stop because the entirety of the story takes place within a week each chapter is divided by the days of the week so monday tuesday why am i explaining the days of the week to you <laughs> yes this book is divided by the days of the week and once i finished monday i was like okay i have to finish tuesday and i obviously need to know what happens on wednesday so you know it's just like the snowball of i just need to read this book until there are no more pages left and that is exactly what i did and i have zero regrets i had so much fun reading this i read it during some reading sprints that i was doing with my patreons it's always so motivating to read with my patreons because you know just reading together and sharing our goals and keeping each other you know excited and energized to read very underrated so yes i finished if cats disappeared from the world i liked it it was enjoyable it had some very insightful lessons and now that i've finished this japanese translation i think i'm gonna try my hands this is definitely like a complete 180 from this very emotional and insightful and a little bit philosophical type of read because now i'm thinking that i want to try and read heaven officials blessing volume three 
Yes, this is a Chinese translation. I don't know if you saw reading my lowest and highest rated books on Goodreads challenge, but the highest rated book on my Goodreads was Heaven Official's Blessing Volume 1, and I was so prepared to not like that book. I had had one previous experience with that author, and I just really did not connect with the writing. It wasn't a good experience. So when I started reading Heaven Official's Blessing, I was like, this is probably going to be the same experience, but at least now I have lower expectations, so maybe I'll enjoy it just a tiny bit. Um, turns out I ended up giving it four stars. I read the second volume in like two days and I have this need, this visceral need of continuing the series and volume three, I already have it on my Kindle. So why not? You know what I mean? Like I've already read two incredible books this week. Why not keep the ball rolling? You know what I mean? <laughs> so I feel like I've said, you know what I mean? So many times already, but anyways. I think now I'm going to start reading Heaven Official's Blessing. It is a bit longer than the first two books that I read, so I don't know if I'm going to be finishing it, but I definitely want to read a couple of chapters. I just, I need to know <laughs> how my characters are doing. I need to know if they're good. I need to know if there's going to be things happening. You know what I mean? <laughs> So yeah, I think those are going to be the plans for tomorrow, but for now, I'm going, I have a date. Yes, yes I do, I have a date. It is an anime date. <laughs> I'm very excited because we are watching a very intense anime. It's called Fire Force. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Actually, I, I'll keep the recommendation until I finish season one. So far we've watched 10 episodes, so I don't want to say that I recommend it until I finish a whole season, but so far from what I've seen, it's a very strong anime and the sound effects, the music, the animation, it's giving. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna go watch Fire Force now, but if Cass disappeared from the world, banger of a book i'm so happy that i read it and i am so excited to start heaven officials blessing volume three so stay tuned for that i hope you're enjoying the video so far and i'll see you tomorrow So, um, hi, yes, look at my new hoodie. <laughs> like, I just have to show it to you guys because it's become my safe space. I could literally be anywhere in the world and I would still feel comforted, safe, protected, cozy because I have this hoodie on. So I just have to show it to you. We have some writing here. We have some huge luffy in the back. It's a vibe. And I've been living in this hoodie for basically every single day of my life, ever since I got it. We have some reading updates. Oh my God, imagine that. A reading challenge with reading updates. Unbelievable, unprecedented actually. I have been reading. What have I been reading? I have been reading Heaven Official's Blessing Volume 3 and I'm really enjoying it. I think I've made it to like 30% and I've just loved being back in this world, being back with these characters, seeing what shenanigans they're getting up to and all of the wild drama that is always surrounding them. It's always very fun. I did read Volume 2 a couple weeks back and I've definitely missed being in this world. So I'm having so much fun reading this book, but I need to be honest with you guys because I do pride myself in being a pretty open and honest person. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be finishing this book for this challenge. Now, that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean I'm not enjoying the book. It just means that I'm kind of in the mood for something else. Like I'm just itching for another Japanese literature translated fiction book. Why am I struggling so much to string words together? Basically, to break it down to you guys in simple terms, I want to read another Japanese book. I know that I already read one at the beginning of this challenge, but I want to read more. I want more. Somebody in my comments section actually recommended the Namiya General Store, 
it sounds like what I'm looking for. It sounds like something that I need. It just sounds like the perfect book. It sounds like the book that I am looking for. So I am going to be putting down Heaven Official's Blessing for now, and I am going to be picking up another book. Doesn't mean I'm not enjoying Heaven Official's Blessing just to keep the record straight. I just want to try something else. So I hope you guys don't mind that I didn't fully finish the Chinese novel that I was reading for this reading challenge. I will definitely be finishing Heaven Official's Blessing Volume 3 at some point during the month, just not in this specific week. I'm going to be moving on to Namiya General Store or The Miracles of the Namiya General Store. I think that's like the official book title. I hope you guys are enjoying this reading challenge and without further ado, let's continue. Hi. <laughs> You know, you know, you know, uh, exactly. I know, you know, I know I don't even have to use my words to, you know, transfer what I'm thinking into your ears, but I will try because, you know, not everybody has what we have. <laughs> okay. You know, you know, when, <laughs> you know, when you're so, you know, <laughs> you know, when you have so much anxiety and you're just so stressed out that you can't even make jokes about it that's where i am that's where i am that's where i am that's where i am where i am that's <laughs> see i can't even make jokes like every joke i try to make just what cannot be considered a joke but anyways i am struggling with debilitating anxiety um which is always a fun time you know what i mean like yes there is a thunderstorm i, I don't know if you can hear it but i just want to let the record show that you know i'm just struggling like struggles are real <laughs> in case you were wondering <sighs> i need to breathe <laughs> update i do have one i finished reading the miracles of the namiya general store even though i don't have a physical copy it was still so fun to read this book because it was so easy to annotate with tears in my eyes like i didn't have to worry about ruining the pages of my book with my tears because you know this is digital it doesn't you know it doesn't matter <laughs> so like i could just very quickly wipe my tears and annotate the scene that had just made me cry and ripped my heart out so there we go look at it in all its glory beautiful stunning perfection do you guys want me to read a couple of quotes that just you know made me evaluate my life made me evaluate my emotions and i feel like you know in a way <laughs> Sorry, my brain is just a jumble of a lot of thoughts at the moment and I'm trying to talk about them in the most cohesive way possible, but at times I just need to let my brain run free and just whatever comes out, hopefully it makes sense to you guys. Hopefully you can see how the how the dots connect. Um, but anyways, I thought I would share a couple of the quotes and a couple of the moments in this book that made me reevaluate everything in my life and made me feel things that i was not ready to feel <laughs> wait have i even okay wait <laughs> okay so should i talk about what the book is before i talk about the quotes maybe i should this is a story that is based on magical realism so we are taking real life and we are injecting a few elements of fantasy something that you know would never happen in reality you know fantasy or magic is suddenly in our lives and some inexplainable things are happening but we're just kind of going along with it because it's a beautiful journey either way so the story starts with these three delinquents th these three criminals who are running away from the scene of the crime they they didn't kill anyone but they did steal a car and you know as karma would have it the car breaks down and one of the guys is like okay i know this abandoned store we can just hide there until the cops just stop looking for us so we can just go there the place that they end up going to is the namiya general store and once they're inside weird things start happening um they receive a letter from the past and they are very confused they're like how is this happening how is this possible what should we do should we like try to correspond with someone that's living in the past like how would that even work like what's going on based off of this premise where we have this store that is somehow connected to the past 
we are suddenly thrust into this beautiful story of human connection and the different things that people go through and the emotions, the feelings, the way that they process things, what is the best way of dealing with problems. But I think mostly like the main thing is just like the human connection. I think it's a very important theme throughout the whole story because the book itself has only five chapters, but every chapter follows a different character, like different sets of characters. So in the first chapter, we're following these three burglars who find themselves in this store. That's the first time that we get introduced to this magical store. And then in the other chapters, we're following other people that by some way or other are connected to this store as well where it be the son of the owner of this store or a kid who lives in the neighborhood who went to this store and it's just a very <laughs> heartwarming story because even though we have you know a very big set of characters somehow you feel like you're connected to all of them and they all have characteristics or they all have situations in their lives that you can relate to or you can feel for them and you know, sometimes it hurts, sometimes it's devastating the situations that they're living through. And no matter how different their situations may be or how different they are from each other, they're all connected by this one thread, which is the Namiya General Store. And I just think it was such a beautiful story. It honestly was. Like, there are just some scenes and some moments that I even wanted to reread right there on the spot because I was like, this is so beautiful, this is so insightful, this writing is just magical. It, there's some sort of fantastical element to this that's making me just fall in love with this story and feel for these characters and put myself in their shoes. I did mention the five chapters and I did mention, you know, the group of different characters that we're following, but we're also following different timelines. So for example, the first chapter takes place in the present, but then chapter two takes place in the past and we meet characters that were there when the general store was still running. So like the people from the present weren't even born when this was going on, like chapter two. And then chapter three, we meet people that are from a different time. Like there are so many timelines, but I think one of the most beautiful aspects of this book is how everything connects. Everything is connected one way or another and seeing how all of these different storylines connect in the end or like halfway through reading the chapter you're like oh my goodness the brain of this author I don't know it was it was such an incredible experience and I don't want to go too much into detail about every single story because I think one of the beauties of reading this book is discovering these characters and seeing their stories unfold right there before you. Instead of having someone tell you what's going to happen, I would really much rather you read it for yourself and just see how beautiful of a story this is. Like, I don't know, I probably didn't do it justice, but just know this was a beautiful story. I think, I think I'm going to give it five stars. I don't know, like I don't want to think about it too much. All I know is that this book healed something in me and for that, for that alone, I think it deserves five stars, but also the writing as well, impeccable, the storylines, the different characters, the way that they all connect, it was brilliant. It's a brilliant book. Even though this is called The General Store, they're not really known for the things that they sell, but it's more so because of the things that the owner does. Every once in a while, people from the town just leave the owner letters with questions or problems or just things that they need advice on. And for no price, literally just for free, because he's feeling up to it because he wants to help people, he gives them advice and he tries to help them in the best way that he can. I treat every letter that comes in as a cry for help. These people are no different from the rest of us. They have a hole in their hearts and something vital is bleeding out. If you need proof, consider this. Everyone always comes by and checks to see if I wrote back. They stop and peek into the milk bin. They can't help but wonder what I had to say to them. You can't ignore someone who speaks to you from the heart. This next one is probably my favorite letter. <sighs> Listen, this one hit because it was yeah, it just hit. I'm not going to give an explanation. It just hit. I do need to give a little bit of background, but it's not a spoiler, I swear. One of the people, they need advice, but they don't know 
how to ask for it or like how to ask for help so they literally just slip in a blank sheet of paper and even though it's empty the owner tries his best to give him some advice anything that could help so he says this this blank sheet symbolizes the absence of a map compare the people who write to me as lost astray in most cases they have a map but just won't look at it or don't know how to find their own location but my guess is neither applies to you your map has yet to be drawn which makes it impossible to decide where you're going much less how you're going to get there faced with a blank map who wouldn't feel lost it would puzzle anyone but try this on for size. A blank map means you can fill it in however you like. It's entirely up to you. Everything is open. The possibilities are limitless. It's a beautiful thing. I can only hope this helps you find a way to start believing in yourself and to move through life with no regrets. <sighs> yeah, so the Miracles of Namiya General Store. I loved it. Low-key life-changing. Um, high key i would recommend this to every single person that i meet in my life like honestly just read read this book please good sir you will not regret it it's not even that long it has like 315 pages and every single page is worth your time this book took me by surprise i honestly started it with zero expectations and now suddenly my life has changed and i think that that's one of the things that i love the most about reading it's just you never really know what's waiting for you at the end of a book. Now that I've finished this miracle of a book, I think I'm going to be picking up The Stranger by Albert Camus. This one has 123 pages, so it's not that long, but I have never read a book from Albert Camus before, so I don't know how I'm going to feel about his writing style. I don't know if it's going to be easy to follow. I don't know if I'm going to like stumble along his words. It'll be interesting to sort of see how he writes, how I feel about his writing style. I don't even know what the story is about. I just know that it's about a man, <laughs> an ordinary man who unwittingly gets drawn into a senseless murder on a sun-drenched Algerian beach. Camus explored what he termed the nakedness of man faced with the absurd. So I have read the first five pages, so literally nothing, but the story starts very interesting to say the least. Um, our main character's mom, or as he calls her, mother, just died. That's pretty much it. Like he, yeah, his mom died, his mother died, and now he just needs to go to the home where she was living to deal with the burial and the funeral and all of those things. So he's just doing that. But it's a very emotionless type of narrative. Like he's just saying, oh, mother died. Um, it's such a hassle to take the bus and to like wait for two hours and like, you know, I don't really want to do this, but like whatever. Like he's very detached from it all. So it's an interesting take. It's an interesting perspective. It's always fascinating to read books from the point of view of characters who don't really have much emotions about the things that are going on around them. Like they're just literally observing what's happening in their lives. Like they are an observer of their own lives. They're not an active participant. And I've always found those stories very entertaining. So I think I'm staying optimistic. I think I'm going to enjoy this one. I have seen Quite a lot of people say that they hated this book and that it was so boring they could not get through it. But hey, I'm keeping an open mind. Hopefully y'all like it more than those people. Fingers crossed because otherwise, what is the point? But yes, this is the next book that I'm going to be reading for this challenge. Wish me luck. <laughs>
everyone. Hi, I come bearing some news. I have actually finished The Stranger written by Albert Camus. It didn't take me that long to finish it because it is a pretty short story. It only has 123 pages. And I feel like there comes a certain point in the story where I honestly just didn't want to put it down. I was very involved in what was going on, which is very interesting because this story is probably the most like <laughs> at a first glance this book probably has the most boring main character he honestly doesn't do much he doesn't feel much he doesn't talk much he is mostly just indifferent to everything that is happening around him he just doesn't really think that anything matters for example the book starts with a very iconic first line mother died today it opens up with our main character mersault just giving us this information as if it meant nothing like my mother died today is the same thing as saying today is tuesday he gives us this very emotional moment as a mere fact just something that happened something that maybe you should know and it sort of introduces us to how he's going to be throughout the rest of the book he simply does not care he has no connections in this world he just doesn't think it's worth it because he's just so convinced that nothing actually matters and like we're all going to die at the end of the day so like <laughs> why put in effort at all like yeah we're going to end up dead either way so like what's the point of it all the only emotions that he seems to feel are bored and tired and annoyed like whenever <laughs> it's like a particularly hot day he's like oh my god the sun is so annoying <laughs> One day, our main character, due to some circumstances and decisions that he thinks don't really matter because like, whatever, because of some of the things that he does, he finds himself the murder suspect or, well, the criminal behind a murder. So our main character, Mersault, he actually commits a murder and part one of the book is just sort of like setting the ground for what we should expect from this character and just getting acquainted with his view of the world and then part two which starts around page 60 is basically the trial you know we're trying to see if mersault is going to end up in jail if he's going to be considered a free innocent man if the murder was premeditated like we just want to understand why this person would kill like why would he murder a fellow human being so i actually did a bit of research on albert camus because he is a very famous philosopher and i wanted to understand his beliefs and what he thought in general what his main thesis was and i wanted to see how his thoughts and opinions sort of influenced the characters that he wrote about camus often talked about the absurdity of humanity and how we are constantly trying to look for a reason or a logic behind people's actions we're always trying to find the why of why things happen. I can't be the only person that has said everything happens for a reason, you are going through this for a reason, but then Camus comes and says, actually, you're going through this because that's just the universe. It actually doesn't mean anything. There's no reason why you're going through this or why you need to go through this. That's just life and it doesn't mean anything. So, <laughs> so as you can see, it's a very interesting opinion. So throughout the whole trial, the lawyer and the prosecutor, they're both trying to defend and also try to understand Mersault and why he would commit this murder. Like they're constantly asking him for his motive or why did he shoot this guy five times? And like, why did he walk there? Did he have any intention? Was this premeditated? Like the actual reason is so irrational and so stupid and bottom line so absurd that you're just left with like this sense of what? what? <laughs> like, okay, maybe I'm having an existential crisis now and maybe that doesn't matter because nothing matters and it's like like i can't believe that such a short book got me thinking so many things and got me evaluating so many things that i just thought worked a certain way but turns out they don't and that kind of messed me up not gonna lie <laughs> 
there are a lot of discussions on death and the inevitability inevitability what that is such a hard word for me to say there are a lot of discussions on death and the inevitability of it and we are also once again discussing the absurdity of life and just living in this earth at this time and it also sort of talks about man's constant need to find meaning behind anything and everything when maybe at the end of the day there's no meaning at all and that is such a depressing thought but also a very liberating one because if nothing matters then like why stress like just live your life nothing matters at the end of the day we're all going to die um <laughs> I'm going through it. This this 123 page book made me go through it. I'm thinking so many things and I kind of just need to sit with my thoughts. I think I need to reevaluate certain aspects of my life and it's all thanks to The Stranger by Oliver Camus. Yeah, what a way to end this video, huh? Just me having an existential crisis and reevaluating the entirety of my life. Um <laughs> I can see why some people would say that I wouldn't enjoy this book and I don't know exactly who I would recommend this to because it's not a book that's for everyone. I feel like you need to be in a certain mood, you have to have a certain state of mind or a certain level of open-mindedness to appreciate what this book does. If you're just here for a good time, that is not what you're going to get. This is very much not that. But I really appreciate the writing style. I love how dry it is. I love how cold and detached and indifferent it is. And for some reason, it just made me that much more fascinated to keep on reading. So for me, I had a very pleasant experience, even though I'm currently going through it once again. But then again, when am I not? So has anything truly changed? I don't think so. <laughs> I have officially finished the last book of this reading challenge and I am really happy with this challenge. I'm so happy that I got to experience different authors from different countries and just gain different perspectives because of course the writing and you know, the things that people write about is going to be different depending on their lives and where they grew up in. I just loved getting a taste of German literature, French literature, Japanese literature, which I think is my favorite so far. Japanese literature just, they just know <laughs> how to write about emotions in a way that just I really connect with. So I hope you guys enjoyed this reading challenge as much as I did. Let me know in the comments below if you have any favorite translated fiction that you think I would love as well. Let me know if you have a certain type of literature that you gravitate towards. I do have a lot more Japanese literature recommendations that I want to get to, but yeah, this was just like taking a little taste test, a little bite from different countries. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. It really helps my channel out and it really helps me keep doing the thing that I love to do, which is make these videos for you. I also have a Patreon where I post exclusive content. I host a monthly book club and I do reading sprints and all of the fun stuff. So if that is something that would be interesting to you, the link is down below as always. I would love to have you join my army of premium simpers. Once Again, I really hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Hey Jimmy, you nice, keep going.